Hey guys, it's Neil here again at FabLocker Hackerspace doing another tutorial for RepRap. This one's going to be on the Maker Gear Kit for the Prussia Mendel. Um, if you follow my videos, you know I've already done a tutorial on the standard Prussia Mendel. Um, the Maker Gear different, or Maker Gear Kit is actually a little bit different. Um, to understand the difference, you need to understand the design goals of RepRap. The primary design goal of RepRap is a self-replicating three-dimensional printer. So that means maximizing the amount of printed parts and minimizing the amount of everything else. Um, the secondary design goal for RepRap is as cheap a printer as possible. Um, Maker Gear's goal was to make as high of quality 3D printer as they could at an affordable price. So um, you'll notice that a lot of the things in this kit are actually pretty upscale compared to what you normally find in a Prussia. Um, so, I'll, with this video, I'm just going to sort of go over what comes in the kit um, and the differences between what comes in this kit and what most people put into their rep wraps. Um, you could build a rep wrap to this quality level, but it would be probably ends up costing more than what this kit costs to do it, um, as, you'll, as I'll explain as I go through the things in it. So, first we'll look at the stepper motors. Um, standard for a rep wrap is usually 1.8 degree steppers. Um, which have 200 steps per rotation. Um, Maker Gear has opted for 0.9 stepper or 0.9 degree steppers on all three motion axes. So instead of being 200 around, it's 400 around. So um, technically, you basically get twice the resolution on your X, Y, and your Z axis. Um, next, you'll see the um, extruder gearbox. Um, standard for rep ramp is um, you'll see your extruder. And out the front of it, you'll have a big giant gear for a Wade's or an Adrian. Um, what Maker Gear has opted for is a metal gearbox, and a, instead of a hobbed bolt for your extruder, he actually uses a pulley, which I've never found these cheap <laughs> anywhere. I don't know where he gets them, but very good um, way of grabbing hold of your filament and a very tough gearbox. This is actually the same extruder that the guy who designed the Prussia uses. So he actually uses this same type of extruder. Um, also, you'll notice that um, rep -rap, most people who build RepRaps tend to use um, A2 tool rod, which is the same stuff a drill bit's made out of. Um, Maker Gears opted for uh, linear smooth rod, which is uh, machined to a much tighter tolerance and a little more corrosion resistant. Also, um, most people that build a rep wrap um, use either um, raw threaded rod or zinc coated threaded rod. Make your gears opted for stainless steel. Also, if you notice the blue dots on both ends, these are actually machined in a machine shop, so they're not. He didn't just pull out a chop saw and chop the threaded rods, which gives you square ends and burrs and everything else. So these are actually you can just take a bolt and slide them on, and you don't get any um, squishing of the ends. He opted for Delron pulleys. Uh, most rep wraps use the printed ones or cast. Um, these are actually machined, so they're machine tolerance. Um, the bushings for rep wrap are typically printed or um, now felt is coming in where we're going to be using felt in rep wrap. These are um, self centering brass bushings, which are the same things you find in industrial equipment, uh, things where once you put it together you never ever want to have to take it apart to fix it because a bushing went out. So these are just tough. You're never going to wear through that much brass in our usage level. All the hardware inside the machine is um, stainless steel also, so it's not just the red rods. Um, RepRap typically uses black oxide or raw because they're cheap. These again are never going to oxidize. Um, you will occasionally see people build rep wraps and use unshielded bushings or plastic shielded bushings. All his bushings are metal shielded, so they're probably never going to give up their lubric lubrication inside them. Maker Gear has um, had the same hot end for about a year now. Uh, he, I think he's went through a few iterations on the design to improve it, but uh, we have seven of these around the hacker space, and none of them ever died. Um, which is incredible because we break everything else, but these hot ends are just known for being just beasts. They don't break. Um, even if you jam them full up with plastic, where with some some hot ends, if you 
end up running PLA up into the thermal barrier, it's junk. You just throw it away and get a new thermal barrier. With these, you just <laughs> knock the plastic back out of them and you're good. Um, let's see, other things. Um, most rep wraps, when you see them, you'll have bundles of these wires running all over the place. Uh, Maker Gears opted to use shielded 18-4 wire. I've tried to um, self-source this stuff. Most places won't even cut it. I couldn't find anybody that would cut it for me. At least the shielded, or at least this grade of it. Um, it's 200 and some dollars a box. But this cuts down on the EM, um, EM coming off the zephyrs and they're um, getting interference off anything else or each other. I think this Maker Gear kit is the only kit that comes with everything you need for a Bowden extruder, either 1.7 millimeter filament or 3 millimeter. Comes with your wire jacket for making everything nice and pretty. Um, printed parts are way better than anything I've ever produced, and I've printed 30 rep wraps. I've never printed this quality before. So, very, very fine. He actually uses his own filament to print the stuff. So, really high quality printed parts. Um, comes with plastic. Um, I think you get an option of how much plastic you get with it. Um, so, I got a spool here. Uh, standard kit comes with the electronics ready. Everything you need to build the electronics in a bag. So, standard kit comes with the PCB. It's about a two, three hour soldering job. Um, not that hard, but I'm terrified of soldering, so um, when I build this kit, I'm going to be letting one of the other guys in the hackerspace do it. Or you can um, get the pre-assembled electronics for 75 bucks more, um, and then everything's ready to go. You just put the Palulus on top and you're done. Uh, he uses a laser cut Y-axis instead of the printed. Um, also, instead of you having to measure out and uh, cut your own jigs, has a laser cut jig so you get the accuracy of making sure it's dang on right. Let's see. Um, also, instead of using, uh, a lot of people in RepRap use a aluminum plate and um, uh, heat resistors or big power resistors, six or nine of them on the bottom. Problem with that is that you get hot spots. So it'll be really, really hot here, cold here, hot here, cold here. And you try to, you know, basically you shield it to try to spread the heat out. Well, he actually uses the heated build plate that was actually designed by the guy who designed the Prussia. Um, if you go to Prussia's blog, you just search. You can find it. Um, these He put a thermal camera to this thing, and it just heats incredibly smooth. Um, let's see. He also includes all your tools. You get all your Allen wrenches and your uh, magnetic level, um, spirit level, all your Allen wrenches and such. It's so everything you need. Um, I think you need a wrench, but... Interesting thing is that if you're in the United States, you can use a 5 16 wrench for 8 millimeter. It'll, it'll fit. Um, so that's everything that's in the kit. Um, next few videos will be me putting this together, showing how everything's done. Please comment if you have any questions. Um, this video series will be different than all the other video series that I did because enough people have asked me. Um, I'm actually going to show the assembly of the electronics. So going from that to this. Also, we're going to go through SchemeForge, how to set it up, how to load firmware, um, and just some general troubleshooting tips for printers. Uh, it's going to be a fun, it's going to be a fun little project. So, um, see you later. Thank you.